Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to talk about dependency injection. Now, dependency injection is one of those more advanced features. Uh, I'm going to talk about it because we do have to understand this before we go on to learning more about frameworks, specifically Angular 2. It introduces dependency injection very early on, and if you don't understand it, you might get lost very quickly. At the same time, dependency injection is not easy to understand in the sense that it doesn't make sense with small programs that we've been doing. If we're making a really super big program, it makes a lot of sense, but I'll try to explain that. I don't think I personally have the concept down completely because of that lack of experience with programming big systems, okay? But let's see if we can go over it a little bit. I have a class here, class cake, because again, who doesn't like cakes, um, string type. So it's either a birthday cake or a wedding cake or something like that. A int eggs, number flowers in cups. So cups of flowers. And are we going to add artificial flavoring, true or false? So we make a our object cake right here from the class. Fantastic. That's what we know. Now, when we look at these, these are instance variables, right? But these can also be considered dependencies. Now, they're not truly dependencies, so I'm, I'm asking you to think a little bit outside, right? So they're, we think of a real actual cake in real life, not just, not just here, in real life. We are depending upon eggs and flour, right? Again, not all cakes. Come on, bear with me, please. So we go to the store, and we get eggs, and we get flour for the sole purpose of making this cake, right? In this sense... We are not using the eggs for anything else. We can't because there's simply a dependency of the cake in and of itself. We can't use this anywhere else. So if we're going to make another, like a loaf of bread, right, same ingredients probably, or at least many overlapping ingredients, class bread, we cannot use these eggs here because they're instance variables. We have to recreate them right here. Now, in a simple program like this, who cares, right? But in a big, huge program, if you, for example, don't have just eggs, let's just say you have a very complex batter. So you have eggs, flour, bread, and you have a bunch of different ingredients. You might not want to mix them up over and over and over again. Maybe you'll instead, you'll, you'll be able to do something else where you can reuse some of these things over and over. So in real life, I'm sorry, I'm jumping back between uh, programming and real life. In real life, you want to get eggs, but you want to be able to use it for different things. Maybe a loaf of bread, an English muffin, bagel, a omelet, right? You want to be able to use it for different things. So you might not want to build it all into the class of the cake, all right? So in this case, we're going to just make it nice and simple. But if I want to make it a different thing, so it's nice and reusable, again, this is simple, but if it's more complicated, if we could picture a more complicated series of variables inside of here. Let's make a class ingredients. Whoops. Make a class ingredients instead. All right. So I'm going to remove int eggs because it's in the ingredients. I'm going to remove artificial flavoring and flour in, in cups right there. So instead, I'm going to use class ingredients. So now if I make a class English muffin, class bagel, class bread or whatever, I can start pulling from ingredients instead. It'll make it nice and simple and I won't actually have to do some, you know, extra repeat the code over and over and over again. Let's just say this is a bakery or something like that. All right. So what I could do inside of here, I would say I would instantiate a new class. So I would say, um, ingredients ingredients equals new ingredients and okay so I see right here I have eggs flowering cups and bool artificial but that's an optional okay right there it's an optional parameter so I'll say eggs two flower in cups four and I'm gonna say true because you know you have to have artificial flavoring in your cake um, okay, so let's do that. So it would be the same thing right here. And so I would say print cake dot ingredients dot eggs. And I'll save this. I don't have to, but print. And it'll be two eggs because it's right there. Okay. So notice it's got to be cake dot ingredients. So cake, then you instantiate the class, right? New class, 
and then you access that right there. So if you notice that you can go list after list in the cake.gradients.eggs.typeofeggs.this, of eggs this it can actually go down depending on how many different classes you have further on in the hierarchy okay so that's another way of doing it but again if we look at something like this what's the problem here well if i make a cake i'm stuck with the number of cake, uh, of eggs and i'm stuck with the number of flour so is this what I want to do every time? Because maybe for the cake, I don't want two eggs. Maybe I want one egg. Maybe I want egg yolks. Maybe I want three cups of flour. So I, it, I, I don't have that flexibility right here unless I start changing the whole class again. Now, there are things that I can do to change that a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll change this around a little bit. But is there a better way of doing it? Well, that's where dependency injection is. So this class ingredients is a dependency of cake. So cake depends upon ingredients, just like it depended upon the instance variables, eggs and flour and stuff like that, right? So we have to keep that in mind. So this is a dependency itself. But how are you going to use this dependency? Do you use the dependency instantiated in the class? Or do you do something differently? Now, in um, some places it says it's hard to debug this, it's hard to track this when, when you instantiate a class within a class. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I'm going to have to take them for their word and say, okay, that's, that's actually true. I don't know if it's true or not, but at least I am told by some people on the internet, which is always reliable, of course, that that is true, and so I'm going to believe it because I don't know any better, okay? Um, what, what's another way of actually doing it? What another way of actually doing it is you don't actually instantiate this until you actually instantiate the cake. So in other words, you don't actually create the ingredients class until you create the cake class. So how would you do that? Well, what we could do is have our constructor, and here I would instead say new ingredients And I'll say ingre ingredients um, ingredients, and I'm gonna say cake equals new ingredients. Whoops. Excuse me, not new ingredients. It would be just ingredients, just like that, okay? Wait a minute, that's wrong too. Okay, I'm getting there, okay. Is that spelled right? I think it's spelled right, okay. So ingredients, I will have type ingredients from this class. Here's my variable, and it will be a dependency right here. Notice I'm not using type the whole time. I, I, I don't know why, but um, I'll still have that in there. So cake ingredients. So how would you actually do this? This will not actually make sense, right? Because it now needs a argument, right? Because here is, oh, it needs a parameter. Um, parameter, it needs a our parameter, argument. It needs an argument um, right inside here. So what are we going to do right inside here? So what we could do is new, because ingredients is the type ingredients, is the dependency, new ingredients and then eggs uh three flour in cups three and then i'm going to say true so that's another way of actually doing it so notice what we've done so we have let's format this real quick so we have the cake class and we have a dependency right here but we don't create the dependency because again this this is not this is an object, but it has no value. It has no substance to it. We create the value right inside of here when we do instantiate it itself. So I'm creating the cake. Right when I create the cake, I'm going to create the ingredients as well. So what does that do for me? It gives me more flexibility, doesn't it? So yes, maybe it's easier to track and debug. I can't verify that being true. But at least here, so now if I'm going to say cake, cake two, equals new cake. So notice that? So I don't have to be stuck with the class itself. I create it right here. And I could say new ingredients. And then I could have one egg and five 
and no artificial ingredients, uh, flavoring, which I don't know why you would do, but again, not judging here. So that's the, some of the flexibility as well. So what we do is it's just a technique, dependency injection, getting this dependency and injecting it into the class right inside of here. It's not instantiated as part of the class. So it's not a dependency in the context of it's instantiated when the class is formed itself, it, it, when it's class is being written. It's more when you instantiate, you give it more details itself. I, I've uh, dis I've read about how people describe it. They basically say it's some other person's problem. All right. So when you're creating a class, you created, if you used new, you know, instantiated the class of ingredients right here, um, it would be your problem to constantly be looking at the class cake itself on a regular basis, right? Because you have to make sure that it fits and everything works really well. And when you instantiate it, it's not a real big deal. It's a dummy type of cake equals new cake. But now when you instantiate it, it's somebody else's problem, meaning it's the problem up here and not actually down here. That may be a good thing just because when you go through code itself, you don't want to keep looking through all these little dependencies and stuff because it can be very, very hard to track in that way itself. So I guess it is easier to, to, to track bugs and stuff like that. So, so if you put all of the problems and all of the dependencies and stuff up here, you at least can track things down a little bit easier. I guess I can see that a little bit. All right. So this is dependency injection. There are several techniques on how to do it, but the concept is you basically get a dependency and you put it into a class where it doesn't actually have, where, where it doesn't actually instantiate it. You instantiate it elsewhere and then put it into the class when you need to. Okay. So we're going to get, as we go through more examples, we're going to try to review this topic again over and over so we kind of get the idea a little bit better. Thanks.